Hello and welcome to honors function. In this first lecture of the second unit, we're going to try to understand the difference between a relation and a function. Let's start with a relation. So, what is a relation? Well, the definition is pretty simple. Any subset of the plane of the plane. That's it. Any subset of the plane will form a relation. What does it mean? Well, it means really any subset of the plane. Here's a plane, for example, right? The Cartesian plane with two axes. And this right here, this line, is that a subset of the plane? Well, sure. You have a lot of points on there. This one, this one, this one, and I mean, it's an infinite number of points. This is a subset of the plane. This is a relation. It forms a relation. How about if I fill in all the points on the boundary and inside. Is this a relation? Sure it is. You have a lot of points there. This is a subset of the plane. It is a relation. And so is any subset of the plane. I couldn't be clearer than that. It couldn't be more general. This is a relation. This is a relation. And so is this. Any subset of the plane. Okay. A more formal definition would say that a relation is any set of ordered pairs. So any set of ordered pair. Pairs, actually. Okay. Any set of ordered pair, that means any subset of the plane. It's the same thing, okay? But we know what an ordered pair is. An ordered pair is an element that you can write as A B. A is called the first coordinate and B is called the second coordinate. Okay, so it's any set of ordered pair. The set of all the first coordinates in the relation determine what we call the domain of the relation. And the set of all the second coordinates of the relation determine what we call the range of the relation. Okay, domain and range. So let's start with an example. Let me first tell you uh, the last word associated with relation. It's the word graph. Okay, so what's a graph? Well, <laughs> this for example, okay, it's all the ordered pair. When you plot them, you have the graph of the relation. So graph relation is really actually the same thing. Okay, a graph is just when you plot them. Okay, all right, let's go over some examples. So in these examples, I want you to find the domain, the range, and also I want you to graph the relation um, only for actually, let's do that for, uh, well, we could do them all, but I'm interested in relation two to relation, I think it's five, okay? Um, I don't wanna plot all these points in the first relation. Anyway, so what is a domain? So domain, I use this capital D letter, of relation one. What is it? It's a set of all the first coordinates. So let's go, let's start. Two, three, five, negative two, zero, six, negative three. Ah, I'm not gonna repeat zero, it's a set. I've already written it once, I don't need to write it twice. Three, got it. Negative three, got it. Four, okay, four, and six, got it already, okay? So here we go. This is my domain um, of the relation. What is the range of the relation? So again, as you, as you saw in the set, we do not uh, report element twice, okay? What is the range of that relation? The range of R1? Well, now we have to read the second coordinate. So negative three, zero, negative two, three, seven, zero, got it, two, negative one, two, negative two, 2, 0, and 7. Here we go. Okay, so the domain has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 element, and the range has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7 element. Okay, this is a very simplistic relation, but it allows us to fix some idea about what the relation is. For example, I can write that. Um, how do I express, for example, that this is an element of the relation? The name of the relation is R1, so I can say that R1 of two, the second coordinate associated with the first coordinate two with the relation R1 is negative three, okay? Do you have another one, another possibility? No, uh, that can only be the second coordinate. But if you look at R1 of, for example, three, okay? So now you have 
this point right here, but you also have this point right here. So R1 of 3 is 0, but R1 of 3 is also 2, okay? This is just a relation. Um, okay, let's, uh, let's move on. I'm going to do example 2, and then you will do uh, 3, 4, and 5, please. So example 2, so of course, this is the way uh, we often deal with relation in math. It's given with a mathematical expression like this, not like a finite number of elements like this, okay? This is not very interesting. Okay, so what kind of relation is this? Wait, hey, guys, we know this one, right? x squared plus y squared equals 1. We know that this is the circle of center 0, 0 and radius 1. So what could be right here? Oops, that's really not pretty here. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, I'm going to keep it this way. <laughs> All right, here we go. So this is x squared plus y squared equals 1. Now, equals 1. Is this part of the relation? Are the points on the circle part of the relation? Yes, they are, because I'm allowing my um, sum to be 1, okay? So it, this, this is all good. Um, but what about smaller than 1? Well, if you take any point right here, and if you add the x-coordinate squared plus the y-coordinate squared, you're going to be smaller than 1. Well, if you take a point here, and add the x-coordinate square with the y-coordinate square, in this case, you would be above 1, okay? So you have three different sets. You have inside the circle, and the shape right here that I'm drawing right now with the circle is called a disk. So a disk is a circle. It's all the points inside and the boundary, okay? The boundary is included in. And you also have the, the space outside right there, where here, if you add x squared plus y squared, you're going to find something above 1. So my relation is just a disk right here, okay? Um, what is in relation, for example, here, let's take an element. Uh, I'm going to take 1 half right there. What is in relation with 1 half? Well, an awful lot of elements, okay? Um, you can have 0. You can have... Um, uh, also, I'm going to write them like that, okay, one-third, right, one-third should be fine, uh, so this one-third is right here, one-third should be fine, uh, one-half should be fine also, uh, one-half should be fine right here, and one-fifth, and because it's y squared, I, I can say plus or minus actually, right, I'm squaring it, so it doesn't matter. Can I get above one-half, like two-thirds? Mm, yep. Possible, yep, yeah, we can go like maybe two-thirds. Uh, I'm not sure, I'm not sure. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, there's a lot of points. Uh, you cannot go higher than this point. We could find what this value is, but this is not the question now. Oh, what is the, sorry, what is the domain? So the domain of R2 is, well, everything between negative 1 and 1, right? Everything between negative 1 and 1, right? It's, it's said right here. For every x between negative 1 and 1, I can find a corresponding y that is in my relation. Even like this one, for example, this is 1, 0, okay? Is this in the relation? Yes, because 1 squared plus 0 squared is 1, and this is negative 1, 0, okay? Uh, what is the range of the relation? Well, likewise, it's everything between negative 1 and 1, okay? So it's everything between negative 1 and 1. All right, guys, please do number three, four, and five. I'm going to move on to the next definition, the definition of a function. So, what is a function? Well, a function, first of all, is a relation. Therefore, the set of functions right here, the set of functions, is included in the set of relation. If you are a function, you are a relation. But you can be a relation without being a function, okay? So you've seen this kind of inclusions before. So a function is a relation. Therefore, it is an ordered, a set of ordered pair. A, B, C, D, okay? And, and this is a set of ordered pair. But it's an ordered pair such that every first element, every first coordinate is associated to one and only one second coordinate, okay? So if here I had another element like a e, for example, okay, a right here and a right here, and I'm dealing with a function, then b has to be the same as e, okay? If a, b, and a, e is in my function, in a function, then it implies that b must be equal to e, okay? This is uh, the definition of a function, okay? 
um, the property to express that, and this is actually a very important property. If I were to use, and we, we I, I know you've seen it as you, so I'm kind of jumping the guns here by introducing this notation y equals f of x, okay? We will be introducing this notation in the second lecture. So if I use this notation, I will say that we have a function if an equality of input implies an equality of output, okay? If an equality of input implies an equality of output. So basically, you could not have, like, suppose this number is x1, but it's also x2, okay? It's also x2. You could not have two different output right here. If f of x1 is right here, you could not have an f of x2 right there. If you are dealing with a function, that's not possible. f of x2 should also be right here, okay? Uh, same input, same output, necessarily, okay? That doesn't mean different input, different output. That doesn't mean that at all, okay? But same input, same output. Okay, uh, let's go over some examples. So in these examples, I'm revisiting the first few examples we tackled about relation to determine if my relations are or not functions. So we already talked about the first one right here. Look at this element. For example, 3, 0 and 3, 2. Okay? 3 equals 3, but we do not have that 0 equals 2. This is not a function because 3 is in relation with two different outputs. Okay? I'm starting to use the um, terminology about function, output, input, instead of first coordinate and second coordinate. How about the second one? So I'll do number seven and I will let you deal with eight and nine. How about the second one? Well, we, we talked about this one too. This is obviously not a function, okay? Um, if you take, for example, uh, let's take zero. Zero is in relation with what? Well, zero is in relation with an awful lot of elements. It's in relation with one. It's in relation with negative one. It's in relation with one half, with two thirds, with negative one half or negative two thirds. I mean, it's an infinite number of elements, okay? What am I doing right here? I'm looking at zero, okay? So the entire segment right here is in my relation. And so, zero, okay, is in relation with any, um, any output on this, uh, on this segment right here. There's an awful lot of them, okay? Let me now go over one more example that is a, a, a not as simplistic as these examples right here. How about number 10? So I'll do number 10, okay? Is this a function? Well, I know what it looks like, right? This is a circle, and the center is zero, zero, and the radius is a five. So it's going to be something like that. This is root 5 right here. This is negative root 5 right here. Same thing on the y-axis, okay? Root 5 and negative root 5. Okay, is this a function or not? Well, the answer is no. And um, to prove that something is not a function, you need to find two points with the same first coordinate and a different second coordinate. So, of course, I could look at this one and this one. Okay, zero is in relation with five, and zero is also in relation with negative root five. And you also have one that is pretty simple right here. If, if x is one, if x is one, then y squared is four, and therefore you have the point one, four, and the point one, negative four, okay? I just need one pair, okay? So I like this one better than the other. So here we go, I found one, pair of points with the same first coordinate and a different second coordinate. Therefore, this is not a function. Now, you understand that graphically, to see if we're dealing with a function, it's pretty straightforward, right? Suppose you have one x right here. Let me call that x1. If this x1 is in relation with two different second coordinates, if you got like here a y1 and right here a y2, okay, then it's not going to be a function. But if this x1 is in relation with only one second coordinate, or let me call that x2 and y3 right here, then this is a function. We call that the vertical line test. If the graph fails the vertical line test, like in this case, then you do not have a function. If the graph passes the vertical line test, then you have a function. Vertical line test, I will often abbreviate that for VLT. It means that a vertical line will 
intersect the graph of a relation in at most one point. It doesn't have to intersect it at all, okay? But in at most one point, okay? I will let you deal with example 11 through 14. Thank you for watching.